Hello, I'm Nick Park from Evangelical Alliance Ireland, and this is our weekly message. It's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And actually, this is our 150th episode uh, of this weekly uh, message. Uh, we started recording videos uh, at the beginning of the pandemic, really to try to encourage churches at a time of great need. And it's something we've just kept going every week since then. Never dreamed we'd still be continuing nearly three years later and 150 episodes in, but here we are still doing this. Over the last few weeks, I've been talking about some of the books, the written resources that we've released over the last few years as Evangelical Alliance. And uh, today I want to talk about a book. Now, the, the other ones we've talked about were in response to issues, live issues that were going on, debates that were at the centre of the public consciousness about uh, uh, migration, about uh, same-sex marriage, about abortion, for example. But this, this book was actually put together for quite a different reason. It's called Myths, Lies and Howlers from the fringes of the new atheism. And it came about by, because we were aware that particularly online, you get a lot of keyboard warriors who keep trotting out the same tired old questions about Christianity, some really stupid objections. Now, the fact is there are thoughtful objections to the Christian faith that we should address and we should be able to sit down and discuss with people. Uh, but the, but the, the ones we're dealing with here were basically ones that were just stupid. And yet they were thrown out there, people that had to clue what they're talking about, stating it confidently. We thought there's a real danger that young Christians, maybe on the internet, will encounter this stuff and actually think there's some substance to the nonsense that they're being uh, confronted with. Things like saying Christianity is the cause of all wars when it's, when it's not even a cause of even 10% even of all the wars. Religion in general isn't even. Christianity itself isn't is, wouldn't even be responsible for one percent of all the wars that have ever been fought. But uh, one of the objections that came up here, for example, was where Christians are accused that we're neglecting the poor in order to build cathedrals. So, for example, uh, was Sarah Silverman, who's a U.S. comedian, said, uh, "Sell the Vatican, feed the world," or uh, 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 somebody called "Atheist Punk Israel." on Twitter said uh, the Vatican owns 25 billion in property and 10 billion in art and yet cannot solve child policy. And we sort of looked at this in a little bit more detail. And we, 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 what, what we show in this book is that first of all, you can't exactly sell the Vatican. I mean, St. Peter's Basilica, you're going to sell that? I mean, how do you sell that? How do you even work out what it's worth? You know, I mean, who's going to really buy an ornate building that's 220 metres long, 150 metres wide, and is designated as a UNESCO World Heritage Site? You know, it's not like Starbucks or McDonald's are queuing up to buy such a building. And the same with the artwork. There's actually, the, the Catholic Church owns a huge amount of artwork, but there's lots of laws in place that it would be illegal for them to sell it. They wouldn't be able to sell it anyway. So, um... The idea that you can just sell this and get rid of poverty in some way is nonsense. And, and anyway, even if you added up 25 billion in property, 10 billion in art, I know 35 billion sounds a lot of money, but you know what? The United States Census Bureau has estimated it would take 69.4 billion a year to end child poverty in the United States, never mind the rest of the world. So actually, all the wealth of the Vatican wouldn't even stop child poverty in the United States for one year, let alone so stop it all worldwide child poverty. That's absolute nonsense. And this idea about by building churches, we're somehow neglecting uh, helping the poor. The fact is that churches need buildings to worship in. And when people gather for worship in church buildings, survey after survey has shown that they are more likely to give to charity, more likely to give to feeding the poor, more likely to give to relieving property. You know what? The more that people attend a place of worship, the more they give to charity, the more they volunteer. And these figures have been shown in culture and society one after another. You know, the, the vast majority of the money that's going into charities to help people, it's, it's, not, it's not coming from some atheist organization or something like that. It comes to a great degree from religious people who worship. And the more they meet together for worship in those church buildings that people are getting so upset about, the more they're giving to charity and the more they're doing to relieve poverty. 
So this kind of half-baked idea totally uh, fails to address the reality. And what we wanted to do was just like on, on a few different issues like that, put the resources in young people's hands. So not even so that they can win an internet argument, that's not what this is about, but they can spot downright lies and nonsense when they see it coming from the fringes of the new atheism. And this book is still available and uh, I, I do believe this is a great resource still for young Christian people and you can order it from Evangelical Alliance Ireland and uh, you can go to our website EAAI or sorry e evangelical.ie and there along with some of our other books you'll find that it's available for sale. You can also buy it for much less as a, just an ebook on the uh, on Amazon if you go if you can use the Amazon Kindle app or anything like that but it's another resource from Evangelical Alliance we want to put good resources into the hands of our young people to equip them to stand up for and be confident in their faith and not be led astray by those that would uh, basically deal in lies and misinformation God bless you it might be Friday but Sunday's coming